Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Pure Nintendo podcast. This is your weekly dose of all things Nintendo. My name is Gemma, and this week I have a full house. I have with me three good friends. I have Kirk. Welcome back, Kirk. Hey, hello, everyone. Hello, konnichiwa. I also have Trev. Welcome back, Trev. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. <laughs> and joining us this week for the first time in a few weeks. Thank you, Justin. Welcome back. Hey, yeah, it's been a little bit. Yeah, good to have you back on the show. And we've got a big show, as always. We've got a few things to talk about, including, of course, the latest Pokemon Presents that happened last week um, to commemorate Pokemon Day. Then we've got uh, some other news tidbits, as well as the games that we're playing currently. So let's kick off with the Pokemon Presents wrap-up. And I just wanted to check first whether everyone, I think everyone's aware, but we know I, I'm kind of being relatively new to the whole Pokemon craze in terms of I think Trev, you and I are on the same boat here. We didn't necessarily play the early games. And Pokemon Day is celebrated every year on February 27th. And what does that commemorate, Justin? <laughs> the launch of the first games in Japan. Yeah. Yeah. In 1996, I think, right? So red and green. So what, what are we up to? 28 years now, the 28th anniversary, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, Pokemon Presents is a special presentation that happens on that anniversary every year. And this year we got uh, quite a few updates, varying in size, I would say. <laughs> um, some, mostly a lot of mobile d uh, updates as well. And just jump in if you guys want to talk about any of these in particular, but the main ones we'll get to as well. But Pokemon Go seems to be the game that keeps on, I don't know, giving, rolling. <laughs> People keep playing after all these years. Keeps on um, going. Keeps on going. Thank you, Trev. <laughs> yes. It's a bit on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that one, and this is interesting because that one's updating with, I believe it's the new season of Pokemon Horizons, the new anime season. Correct. Did we get that? So basically, this is the, and this is interesting because it's the season that Ash is not in for the first time. So I think it debuted last year in Japan, but now it's coming to Netflix in the US sometime, I think in March, the 7th, I believe. Um, and so Pokemon Go is doing some sort of special collaboration with the new season of Horizons. Maybe it's because, you know, is it is it good that Horizons is going to be well known for being the first season without Ash? I don't know. It's like, that was big news last year, wasn't it, when they said, Hey, Ash is gone. He's not in the show anymore. But yeah, we haven't had a chance to see it yet, so we'll see how that turns out. Um, I guess Pokemon Unite is another one that keeps on giving. And I haven't played this for a while. And I remember you guys introduced me to this, or at least Justin did, a yeah. few years ago. Has anyone been playing this one recently? It's been a couple years. Um, I think I played some of the updates that they've that they've done. Um, mm. but yeah, I, I was kind of hoping there would be more additions to like the the maps, you know, uh, mm -hmm. world maps, and layouts. But um, it seems like we've gotten some limited ones of those, and then they're just adding adding more Pokemon you can play as. But yeah, that's it. Yeah, I haven't played it probably in at least twelve months actually, and I was kind of hooked on it for a while there. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I don't think I played it since we played it together. Right. Even yeah. though that was fun, I just I never got back to it. Yeah. Yeah. It is super fun. It's free to play or to download, and you can just purchase, like, what, costumes and Pokemon, I guess. But, yeah, I don't know. I just don't have time lately, I guess. But it is fun. Um, Pokemon Sleep is another one. I think we talked about that when it launched. Um, was it you, Justin, who gave it a quick go, I think, or something <laughs> at the time? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I did. I did try it out a little bit, um, and it's it's interesting. Um, but yeah, like like you're you're basically catching, you're collecting Pokemon, but you're collecting Pokemon like poses, like you're collecting their various sleep poses, you know. So like <laughs> Pokemon, they're like sleeping on their back or on their side, or, you know. So it's 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 a cute concept. Um, but... Yeah, yeah, it is cute, and so I think they've added. Uh, a few more Pokemon, and there's some sort of login bonus at the moment, I think, for that one. Um, but getting to kind of some of the bigger ones, so Scarlet and Violet um, is, well, and, uh, you know, Justin, feel free to tell us your, because you've tried this. So there's Terror Raid battles that have been, how do I explain this? <laughs> Can you do better than yeah. me? <laughs> yeah, so they they're, um, they announced three new raid battles, and they're, they're all based off of the original um, Final evolutions of uh, 
uh, the main core ones like uh, Squirtle, Charmander, um, uh, and Bulbasaur. Oh, so Bulbasaur, you've got, yeah. you, so you've got Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise, and their Terra type, you know, um, that, that uh, you're fighting. And for if you haven't played Scarlet and Violet, like the Terra type, it, it can, even though Venusaur is like a grass type, uh, his terra type may be flying type or, you know, so um, I think it's flying. Like it's, it's typically something that's kind of like the opposite. Um, but, but some mm-hmm. of them are just kind of, they decided, yep, he's going to, this Pokemon is going to be that um, specific terra type. Um, so it's kind of a cool idea in the sense that, you know, you may, you may throw out like a Venusaur in battle and then you terastalize and it augments their entire typing. Um mm-hmm. So they're no longer weak to the stuff that grass Pokemon are weak against, you know? So um, anyways, um, so yeah, I think each of those are like over the course of like 10 days. Um, so I think Venusaur is first and then um, maybe Blastoise and Charizard. I think they've done Charizard before. So this is like his second time through in the, in the terror mm-hmm. raid battles. Um, but some of these like time things, I'm always, like if I can't play on like the, sometimes it's only over like a weekend and mm-hmm. it's like, if you don't get a chance to play, it's, it's kind of a bummer. Like I wish, I wish in some of these cases with these live service uh, features and games that you could be like, well, you know, could I just play this the next weekend or the, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. That is a bit of a nuisance actually. I think yeah. I agree. Um, so you jumped on and tried to join a uh, terror raid battle. Did you have any luck? <laughs> I, I did not. So I, for those that have, have tried Scarlet and Violet, um, they have like, you can connect online and you go to this like polka portal as they call it in the game. And you basically go through these menu systems and you're like, okay, let me look at the terror raid battles that are available. And it shows like eight or 10 of them. It shows like these little, little cards and, it shows you kind of an outline of the Pokemon and it's like, why can't we just show the full Pokemon? Like, like we know what yeah. the outline is. Yeah. Just, just show the full Pokemon, you know? Um, and it shows you like what their Terra type is. And, and then it shows like a star rating for the difficulty. Um, mm-hmm. But it seems like more often than not, probably like 80% of the time when I select one, it's like, Oh, this one's full or this one, you know, <laughs> this, one, this one's mm-hmm. already started or something like that. And then you have to wait, like there's a refresh button. You have to wait like, um, like a minute or something before you can actually refresh the listing. <laughs> it's very painful, uh, and just slow trying to get into some of these terror battles. Um, anyways, so it's a bit, it can be a bit of a bummer, but, um, you get honestly doing the terror raid battles is the quickest way to level up your Pokemon now because you yeah. get these like, uh, experience candy drops, um, so you'll, especially for these, like, uh, these big ones that are like five star difficulty, you'll mm-hmm. get like, uh, experience candy, large or XL. Um, and if you do like one of those, like a Pokemon can go up like 10 levels if, and that's like, that's from like level 70 to 80 or, you know, uh, maybe not Ooh. quite that much, but, um, but yeah, you can level up your Pokemon really, really fast. So, so I, I typically try to, um, do at least some of the terror raid battles, uh, here and there every couple of months. Cause it just, uh, gone are the days that you just stockpiled a bunch of rare candies. Um, these, mm-hmm. these, uh, experience candy ones that they have nowadays are rare candy on steroids. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't done any battles for a while. I was, you know, when I was playing it, uh, quite a lot last year, um, I had Violet, you know, I was jumping into battles every now and then. I don't think I did any super hard ones though. I couldn't seem yeah. to find, Maybe because my level does it does it rate does it put you in the battles that it thinks you can handle or yeah, does it give you a range yeah. and, to choose from? Yeah, okay. And you do have to if you if you beat the entire game and you beat so you beat the Elite Four and then there's like some other like storyline that's kind of like post game stuff and you have to beat all of that and then then and only then will you see like some of the five star and the special mm. the special rate battles. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, that makes sense. That's probably why I didn't see them then, because I wasn't finished. <laughs> Still not quite finished. I need to get back and finish it. 
Um, and I also want to do the DLC, which I know you've been playing through as well. I had a question about the DLC, which is how long, how long generally in hours is say the Indigo disc, like how long does that generally take? Do you think? Um, so yeah, I've, I'm about halfway, I think through the Indigo disc, I played all the way through the teal mask and it's, it's anywhere from like, uh, like you could, you could blitz it and probably eight hours, um, mm -hmm. by like content wise to, to catch all the Pokemon in the new, in these new regions. Um, cause they have, uh, I think it's 200 new Pokemon, uh, or maybe it's just a hundred, um, not like new, new Pokemon, but like Pokemon from the, the past of the series, but new to Scarlet and Violet that, that weren't in the base game. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's quite a bit to, to see and catch. Um, so you, you're probably can still get like 15, 20 hours, uh, maybe even a little cool. bit more. Um, so, and the, the biome, uh, biome or, or biodome, uh, there's this underwater biodome that you are in for the indigo disc. Um, and it's literally split into like four quadrants. Um, and it has like these these kind of like walls in between, um, and there's like a coastal one, an ice one. And anyway, um, so that, that's been pretty fun to kind of explore around. Hmm. It sounds pretty fun. It's on my list, you know, that I want to play it. It's just finding the time, really. But yeah, I should just get it. Yeah. It, it does look it's, cool. Yeah. Uh, one of the biggest critiques with Pokemon games in recent years, um, or maybe even the last couple generations, is they're just too easy you know so like yeah a lot of us that grew up with pokemon and now we're in our you know uh, 30s and early 40s you know that have grown up with it um we want a little bit more of a challenge right you know like mm -hmm. you know it's, it's kind of mm -hmm. funny like, like pokemon the the audience that they're building the games for is for for kids but like in actuality probably a lot of the audience is still a lot of the uh the yeah. originals <laughs> that grew up with it you know so that are that maybe have kids that are teenagers now but um, mm -hmm. <laughs> anyways, uh, the, um, I'm getting old now. Oh, the difficulty so, level, I guess. The difficulty so level. The, yeah. I think this one um, is more difficult for that reason. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Like it's, yeah? <laughs> um, the elite four, I'm finding the, the fairy, uh, type one. Um, I think Lacey is her name. Uh, she mm -hmm. is brutal, man. Um, and I, and I was like, like, like at first I'm like, man, is it just me? Am I having trouble with this? And I remember I, I was looking yeah. online and, and there's like, everybody is like, oh, this is like, like people were complaining, but they were simultaneously like, yes, Game Freak, finally a, a difficult, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's almost like Game Freak heard the, heard the cries and they're like, all right, you, you want some, some difficulty here, here you go. <laughs> but, but man, like, yeah, Lacey is, is something else. So I'm trying to. I, I'm having to like basically restructure my whole party to to, to fight her because I just don't. Wow. Have, um, I've got really high level Pokemon. I've got several hundred uh, level hundred Pokemon, um, and mm -hmm. and usually that's enough to compensate for you know any of the um, you know if you don't even if you don't have like super effective moves or something. Um, mm -hmm. But man, uh, her her Pokemon just uh, take out most things. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, it keeps you on your toes, I guess. So, hey, if you wanted difficulty, then you got difficulties. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for that update. Uh, mm -hmm. The other two announcements that came with the presents, uh, show, uh, what, what do you call it, showcase, um, is the first one is this Pokemon trading card pocket, which is a mobile, would you call it a game or an app? I don't know. It's coming in 2024, apparently. Um yeah. What do we think of this? Are we interested? So it's basically like a virtual packet of Pokemon cards, right? You like you even do the rip motion to rip the top off. Yeah. The cards come out. They look all shiny and nice. You can move them in directions, I guess. Is this something we're interested in? How do we feel about that? It's I guess. not like a uh, update of the, the trading card game like they had for, for Game Boy Color or whatnot back in the day. It doesn't... <sighs> It's sort of similar. Like it is still like a game. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you are collecting cards and you're, uh, but they, they showed off like, they haven't shown off like every mode in it, but they showed off like a simplified battling experience. So um, 
I, I'm hoping that doesn't dumb it down too much, but but part of me was a little excited because sometimes the the TCG uh, can be a bit like like I still kind of prefer the video games over TCG, but mm-hmm. I've always been like curious about it. Like I uh, that was I was one of the few that probably didn't collect many Pokemon cards. I was kind of like, no, I, I like the video games, you know. Um, but I always liked the designs of the Pokemon cards. Like I, I like I always mm-hmm. wanted to like TCG, but um, <laughs> yeah, like I, but I love the designs. Like honestly, like when they were showing this off and they showed some of like the immersive cards where it's like like three D, like you can kind of you know um, turn them or, or like you can actually like uh, it like goes inside the card. You know, it shows like mm-hmm. this whole scene. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's yeah. really cool. So I. Like, I mean, these are, these are really awesome artists. The the artists that do the Pokemon card. Uh, yeah. Game. Um, it's really cool. So, so seeing some of those like have a bit more life to them and, and motion and, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to get it just for that. And it's going to be a free game. It's going to be something you can just, you know, collect these. I, I kind of like that they're allowing you to rip off the digital thing. Like it just adds some more tactility that. Yeah. Um, is maybe a little silly, but I think it, I think that's cool. So. Yeah, I think so. I'll definitely check it out. I think it's you know there's a, I know there's a Star Wars card game, not a card game, collecting app kind of thing that I checked out with my kids a couple of years ago. That was pretty good. Um, and there's some sort of Marvel one as well, I believe. Right? There's some something, something yeah. along the lines of Marvel collector cards. It seems like there's a few around. Yeah, but this one maybe is more uh in depth with like you said the artists and how it shows off the different scenes and things like that which is pretty cool and it's awesome to see that what the artists do behind the scenes because like you don't think necessarily about it when you buy a packet of cards because my kids have like a thousand pokemon cards each they have a lot of pokemon cards and you know you get them a packet and you're like yeah there's there's a packet oh there's a couple of good ones in there you think how long did this take to design for these people you know who made them there's a lot of effort that goes into it so yeah hey i have a question yeah um because I predicted in our predictions uh, for 2024 that there'd be a new uh, mobile app or game. And I know, you know, Pokemon isn't really first party per se, but is it close enough where we can count that for me? <laughs> I, I think we could probably count that. I think it's actually uh, D- DNA or whatever the, that mobile partner that Nintendo's worked with on some of their first party mobile apps. I think they're working with the Pokemon company on it. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. I think that. There you go, Trev. One point for you yeah. already. That's right. This is my year, nice. finally. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the year of Trev. Uh, and the and the final announcement they they always say the best, I guess, and the biggest to last yeah. uh, was Pokemon Legends. Um, do you just say Z A or do you how do you pronounce this? Just Z A. <laughs> what do you call it? Yeah, we we would say Z here. Uh, yeah, of course you would. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> it sounds weird to you when I <laughs> say Z. But the Z A is cool too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. so, so, like it's uh, uh, yeah what does the z or the z and the a refer to exactly do you know so i th- i think the z is referring to zygarde um okay so uh zygarde is so remember x and y um they were the gen 6 pokemon games um mm-hmm. and they were set in a region that was styled after france um so that's why you have kind of the Eiffel Tower looking thing in the uh, in this trailer for the new one. Um, so yeah, that was mm-hmm. that was a big fix- focal point in the in the games world. Um, but yeah, they had X and Y, and there was always a rumor that um, you know how they've always you know like you had uh, red and blue, and then Pikachu, uh, the yellow, um, the yellow one. Um, so you had Pokemon mm-hmm. Yellow, you had Pokemon Gold and Silver, and then you had Pokemon Crystal. So there was typically like a a third edition sometimes after those first two. And um, so Pokemon Z was, it was actually rumored for a long time. So people were like, Oh, is this finally Pokemon Z now? Granted, it, I think it's totally, it's totally different because it's going to be a legend style game. So it's not, you know, it, this isn't Pokemon Z and they're just finally coming out with it. It's, it, mm-hmm. it is, it is a spinoff and it's in, it's going to be more similar to like Pokemon legends, Arceus um, just set in the Pokemon X and Y. Uh, world but mm-hmm. cool i don't know what the a is standing for right now um it's sort of it sort of looks like uh 
like they might introduce some other new Pokemon, some new legendary or something. Like it looked looked almost like legs or something. I don't know. It was kind of mm. uh, interesting in the logo. But... Yeah, intriguing. Mm. Yeah, I mean there was a trailer shown that showed off, uh, I guess Pikachu in different environments running through. And what's the what's the city called that we're that we're based in? For uh, this L- one? L- Lumios, Lumios City. Yeah. Um, so yeah, very early days. This is you know a teaser really, I suppose, or a teaser trailer. Uh, it's not coming out till 2025, yeah. but it's something that, you know, fans were excited about. I mean, Trev, you, you played Legends Arceus and enjoyed that one, right? So you're looking forward to seeing what this one brings? Yeah, team? that's actually my favorite uh, Pokemon game to, to date yeah. of, of the ones I've played, which haven't been that many. But I did want to uh, ask you guys a question and maybe – uh, kind of start a, a rumor of our own going here. <laughs> okay. So at the end of the trailer, you know, it said like releasing simultaneously 2025. Yeah. And, you know, the presumption is, okay, it's going to release both of these games in like North America, Europe, Australia on the same day. Right. Yeah. But mm-hmm. has any Pokemon trailer previously used that type of language simultaneously? Like I remember, uh, with X and Y, which were my first Pokemon game, they're like mm-hmm. releasing worldwide in whatever, 2013 mm-hmm. or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they said simultaneously struck me as odd. And it makes me wonder, is this going to be a Switch 2 or a Switch Pro game and a Switch game? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I, I, yeah, a lot of people were talking about that. Um, and I, I, th- I think that's probably going to be the case, Trev. I th- um I don't know that they were trying to allude to that or, or, or hint to that, or if it was just like, this is, this is the nomenclature that they decided to use at this point instead of worldwide versus simultaneously. But, hmm. uh, but yeah, I, I, can, I can, if, if I thought that, and I'm not anyone who's going to dig around, you know, Pokemon message boards or whatever, but <laughs> that struck me immediately as more of a casual fan. So I'm like, man, I wonder how the yeah. hardcore, Pokemon guys are, are running with this. <laughs> yeah. I, like I, I, I was digging into some of the message boards um, and uh, they did, they did launch the website for the game. Um, and I think it goes mm-hmm. into, it, it does say something a little bit. So it, it specifically says releasing simultaneously worldwide in 2025. Um, now I think in the trailer, it said something else. It also says to, that it's launching on Nintendo Switch systems with an S, which I know could just be your OLED and your, um, you know, your regular Switch or whatever. But it just sounds sauce. It just sounds like <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I agree with Trev. <laughs> you know, I think they changed the video. I thought when they first showed it, it said releasing simultaneously in 2025. I don't remember the worldwide there being next yeah to it, same but it, it is on the website and, you're right hmm. mandela effect it's it's possible yeah it's possible we missed it or or you know that they they updated it to kind of like oh uh, we see where the rumors are going with people let's uh <laughs> yeah, yeah just the wording yeah. just struck me as curious yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. me too yeah definitely yeah. i definitely thought the I, same thing i think for sure they're gonna uh, you know, if, if if the Switch 2 is like early next year, um, I, I could see it launching simultaneously, and um, that would yeah. be a that would be a big a big thing to launch with. Like, I honestly don't know have they had have they had a major Pokemon game launch with new hardware? I mean, maybe since like the Game Boy days. Yeah, I can't think of anything recent. That's for sure. Trev, you got anything? Like, like like Pokemon was always kind of later. Like I don't it was know. A- maybe Game Boy Color, maybe. I don't know. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Mm. I think it's yeah. highly likely. And yeah, especially if you know, if the rumors are true that the Switch 2 is happening in 2025. And as soon as they said 2025, and I don't think they even said Switch in the trailer originally, did they? They just said releasing simultaneously. And I'm like, I think they had the logo. Mean? Did they? Yeah, it yeah. just had the logo. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't mm. like. There was no text mm-hmm. uh, of mentioning switch, but yeah, the logo is just in the top yeah. right. But which but, they might end up keeping that logo if it's like 
Switch Pro or whatever. True. I don't know. Yeah. And I mean, after seven years or whatever, they, they might want to hold on to it because it's brand, you know, it's brand recognition, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah. 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 So that's interesting. I wonder when we'll hear more about that. Probably not for a little while yet, I can imagine. But yeah, that's yeah. an interesting one. The A, you know, talking about the A in the logo, it looks very leafy. Like it's a green A with kind of these like little, I don't know, plant-like veins crawling up from the bottom. Does yeah. that mean anything to you, Justin? It does look like some of the, uh, there was in the teal mask, uh, Ogre Pond uh, was one of the, the legendaries or mythicals that they had announced in there. And it kind of looks like the legs of like a grass type mm. Pokemon. Mm-hmm. The The Z yeah. is definitely Zygarde indicative because of that like honeycomb um, yeah, right. pattern. If, if you look up uh, what Zygarde looks like, um, Zygarde has that honeycomb um, hex- hexagonal pattern. Um, they did have like other forms of Zygarde, but, and there was like a, a bi- bipedal version, but it's, his legs don't look like that, those legs there. Like that almost does look like, like grass, like you're saying. So yeah. it could be that like almost, almost always they're mm-hmm. either going to have a brand new, mythical or something even even in kind of a spin-off game like the legends ones where um you know maybe they'll have a new mega evolution that was the one thing did you guys notice that at the very end of the trailer that like colorful icon mm-hmm. um that's yeah. that's the that's the mega evolution symbol um, if you guys okay. yeah um like trev you, you you said you played x and y right so you know of the the mega evolution. Did, yeah that was my first mainline one actually believe it or yeah. not <laughs> and mm-hmm. mega evolution was a really popular like they typically call them the gimmicks you know like hey what, what what's what's the new gimmick in this generation of pokemon games right and you know terrestrialization is the is the gimmick in in scarlet and violet mm-hmm. um but in x and y it was mega evolution and that that lasted they did it in the um omega ruby alpha sapphire um they did more uh with mega evolution there I think they've recently added some of the mega evolution um, of all forms to Pokemon Go, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. like, it, it's a fan favorite um, thing. I, I was always disappointed with mega evolution because I kind of wanted it. I wanted them to be a bit more persistent in that form. Like, like you could only use them in that mega evolve form in battle. So mm-hmm. you yeah. couldn't. You couldn't even like, you know like have them travel alongside you in their mega form. I don't know. It was, it was oh. kind of <laughs> yeah. That seems like a missed opportunity, doesn't yeah. it? You just want so ho- hopefully they, hopefully they um, do some of that. Yeah. Cool. Well, there's lots to look forward to in, uh, in Pokemon land. <laughs> so thank you for that. Yeah. Maybe even some melodrama for Kirk. Some melodrama. <laughs> yeah. Have, has anything we've said convinced you to, to do anything related to Pokemon Kirk? No, but I'm learning a lot. Yay. <laughs> <That's great>. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, well, let's move on to some little news tidbits. Um, and we talked about Animal Crossing Lego a while ago when they announced this, I think. And now, uh, March the 1st, these sets have come out, five new sets. So I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention, really. But does anyone have – I don't know if, if anyone here is a Lego enthusiast. My son is. <laughs> so mostly Star Wars, know. but still. I am a huge. Yeah, Justin player. has some. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you looking yeah. to purchase any of these Animal Crossing sets? You know, it's it's kind of like I, I, I do love Lego. I have not gotten any of like the Mario sets, but I've gotten some mm-hmm. of the, the Lego Nintendo ones, like the Question Block and the mm-hmm. Lego NES. Like some of those, are a bit more like, it's a bit more of a challenge to build some of those and. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm I'm more of like into the the display of Lego now rather than the play of Lego. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, the the Lego Mario stuff is still really cool. Like I would have loved that as a kid. Um, mm. But and yeah, Animal Crossing like the sets look fairly like like the kind of smaller sets, and um, so I don't I don't know that I would probably pick them up. But um, yeah. But yeah, I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad Nintendo's working with Lego more. I'd, I'd love to see some Lego Zelda and 
Yeah, yeah, wouldn't we all? Absolutely. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Yeah, they look really cool. They are very they're they're a bit small, like you said, probably more child yeah. friendly, I guess. I would like to have seen some minifigures that you could just buy, you know, even if they were the the random packs. I would I would definitely collect the minifigures. I like I like oh, yeah. mini <laughs> rather than the sets, because I myself wouldn't wouldn't probably go out and buy them either. Like I probably yeah. rely on my son to do that. To just and I don't know if he'll be into it or not. We'll see. But like like you, we've got sort of like we've got this big Bowser Lego, which is, you know, one of the more, you know, like adult themed one in terms of complexity. Um, yeah. And a few others like that that we have on display, which is pretty cool. So we'll see maybe if it's, I mean, if it's popular, this, who, who knows, there might be more Animal Crossing Lego that is more along the lines or maybe minifigures or whatever. Mm-hmm. And this isn't that interactive type like the Mario one, you know, playing, like you said. They look really cute. I think there's... There's Tom Nook in one. I think Isabel's yeah. in one. There's a few cute little characters there. It's just very colourful and, I don't know, it looks nice. It suits the Lego theme or the Lego kind of world, I suppose, that Animal mm. Crossing, you know, it's a builder, It's a builder, right? So yeah. anyway, it's out now. If listeners have, uh, you know, purchased or built any of these, let us know. We want to know your thoughts. Uh, we'll do the same if we if we ever get one. <laughs> Uh, another very random piece of news was that the latest episode of The Simpsons features a dream sequence where they, the cast of characters are uh, Mario Kart themed. <laughs> um, and I came across this just yesterday. And I think, Justin, have you seen the episode? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't yeah. watch it in Australia. Uh, I to watch The New Simpsons in Australia. It's not on Disney Plus yet. And it's no longer on free to air, I believe, over here. So I can't watch it. Uh, so I've seen the clip on YouTube. But um, yeah, do you want to tell us about it, Justin? Yeah. So in in, in the episode, the context is that uh, Lisa has anxiety because uh, Homer's driving, um, and it, so it shows Homer driving crazy, and you know Lisa's, um, <laughs> you know, real 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 uh, um, not enjoying it in the back seat, and then she goes to therapy, and the therapist is like. Well, we have this new um, therapy where we kind of we call it immersion therapy, where we just kind of immerse you in your in your anxiety, and, and so, <laughs> right. so it shows like people that are like surrounded in like cockroaches and all this other stuff. And, and, uh, <laughs> it, anyways, but like uh, she takes takes her to this like go kart track, and um, she's like, "Hey, well now you can be in control of the driving, right? Like maybe your anxiety stems from the fact that you're not." in control of the vehicle, you know, when, when your dad's driving. So, um, so she learns how to drive this go-kart really fast and she ends up, uh, entering this whole like league for like kids, <laughs> like a kid's formula racing, but for go-karts. Right. And, right, okay. um, you know, so it's anyways, it, that, that's, that's behind the scenes, but yeah, there's, um, there's a Mario Kart sequence where, uh, Homer is like kind of Wario themed um, yeah. <laughs> on, on one of the carts. And um, anyways, and I think they end up talking about Mario Kart just a little bit after the dream sequence. And uh, and Homer's like explaining like all these like really detailed things about Mario Kart. And she's like, dad, I, I don't, we're not talking about Mario. He's like, Mario Kart, what's Mario Kart? You know, like, but he's, you know, he's oh, obviously yeah. been describing all these ins and outs of (laughs) of Mario doesn't know what it's called (laughs) anyways um, yeah it's funny no he makes this little Wario noise as well doesn't he he's like yes yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, it's pretty funny it's pretty funny it feels like um you know because the scene where they're they're driving around in Mario Kart uh you know get up or whatever looks a little bit like the movie Rainbow Road kind of thing so I wonder if it's based on the movie I don't know, because sometimes be. The Simpsons isn't always the quickest with its references, you know, because yeah. they have a production schedule. So they may have written this <laughs> last year. But it, <laughs> yeah, didn't um, they just have the NFT uh, episode? Like, <laughs> it's yeah. like that's a few years kind of past the bloom. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it's from the movie that that might have uh, inspired them. Perhaps I don't know, but it's a funny scene. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, don't know if, if anyone else I don't know how many people still watch The Simpsons. We you know, the new episodes, the new seasons have their ups and downs, I think. Um I'm not up to date at all, but I still love the show. Uh and when that one comes out, I'll def- I'll definitely check it out. Just can't watch it in Australia right now that I know of. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
Yeah. They should do they a Simpsons like, Mario Kart game. Like they did that yeah. crazy taxi yeah. Simpsons spoof. Why not Mario Kart? Ah, uh, that was right. so fun. I love that game. Yeah. It's like GameCube. Homer could throw donuts right. at him or, you know, yeah. who could <laughs> drop squishies to make the carts um, kind of roll around or. Yeah. You know. They'd be like the banana peels. Yeah. Instead of banana peels. Oh, that'd be good. I'd like that. Mm. Yes. Anyway. So, yes, uh, that was a nice little, just an interesting little random Nintendo tidbit. <laughs> um, the next thing before we got into the games we're playing is that, and this is a, just a small another piece of news that we heard during the week, is that there's a Virtual Boy emulator for the 3DS, which we don't know a whole lot about except that it exists. And it's uh, recently released for the 3DS. I think the motto is Flugel, potentially, is what I've heard. And um, Trev, please add anything if you happen to know more <laughs> about this. But we're talking lot. about. I just want yeah. to say that it's. I, I wish, you know, where was this seven, eight, nine years ago? Like, I, I can't believe Nintendo never did this legit on yeah. the 3DS. It seemed tailor made mm-hmm. for the Virtual Boy library, and uh, I'm glad that you know that fans are able to. To, to do preservation like this when Nintendo is very sporadic in that regards. Mm-hmm. And obviously yeah, exactly. the 3DS is, you know, long discontinued. Yeah. Um, so mm. do what you will. I mean, I guess technically you can still go online with the 3DS for another month or so, but it's, yeah, it's, very... <laughs> it's, it's gone. So, yeah. Um, I mean, the poor virtual boy, it was what, 1995. I think it lasted less than a year. Only 22 mm-hmm. games were ever even released for it. Uh, never made its way to Australia. I think it did go to the US. Did you have one, Trev? Did I hear you say that once? I, you have one? I did. Um, yeah. Blockbuster Video used to rent, you know, the systems. And uh, it was on clearance for like, I don't know, 30 bucks, like box and everything. Wow. And I actually, for that price, I had a blast with it. And mm-hmm. Wario Land was terrific. I think I did a retro review of that in an old issue with Mag. Um, mm-hmm. had a lot of, uh, you know, cool Nestor's funky bowling. That was another one. I had a lot of cool, <laughs> cool things, but it wasn't really practical. I mean, it wasn't a handheld cause it had like a stand. Um, yeah. sometimes I would remove the stand and like kind of lay it on my head in bed, but even then it was a little clunky. So, mm-hmm. um, it was a little too, too ahead of its time in a yeah, lot of respects. Definitely. And you could tell it wasn't getting Nintendo's. You know, the N64 was getting their A game, right? So, yeah. But yeah. no, it was cool. And I had it for years until one of the lenses broke. I, in fact, I still have it. I just haven't repaired oh, it. Oh, that's cool. So. It's probably worth something, especially if you get it fixed. It sounds Maybe. like something you would find in Kirk's basement, though, really. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll go look. <laughs> it might be down there. You might have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just double check for us. Yeah, yeah, the things you turn up down there. I'd be happy if I just find my son's uh, 3DS that uh, one day disappeared into the ether, and, and he has no explanation why it's gone, and oh. we don't know where and when. I keep thinking one day that's going to magically appear. But if if I find the uh, Virtual Boy instead, I'll take it. <laughs> Did you look I'm in the car seats again, like last time? You didn't try to sell a car with the 3DS <laughs> <in> the seats. <laughs> yeah. Imagine the whole happened. system. That was a big system too. I think it was it a new. I don't think it was a new 3ds. Oh, the XL. Um, yeah, was it the XL? Maybe it was. Yeah, it was definitely an XL. It was a big blue. Oh uh, yeah. I remember yeah. people are like, I can't fit it in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you wearing? Like Daisy Dukes? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> bring back the Game Boy Micro. That was that was awesome. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Was... That was very. You're, you're not judging yeah. people wearing Daisy Dukes when they play video games, are you? Because I. Uh, <laughs> hey, Sometimes never, have to. never. I, I know, I know, dozens of people who wear cutoffs. So, <laughs> there's dozens. There's dozens of them. <laughs> Very good. Well, yes, Virtual Boy. There you have it. Um, I, I tried it. I think I might have mentioned this a while ago. I did try it in Japan in a random uh, shop that I found full of old games and systems. I was so excited. I think it's. I think I even put the picture on maybe Instagram. Um, I was beyond excited because I've never tried it, and it's like this system that I kind of grew up hearing about, but not having access to. And you know, it's kind of because it was uh, decommissioned so quickly. <laughs> it certainly never made its way here. So yeah, I gave it a go. I thought it was really cool. Like you said, ahead of its time, and 
a bit clunky, but but it was with the mid-90s, right? Good on Nintendo for trying these things, as they always do. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tell you, yeah. the mid-90s was like, everybody had a system. It was like the heyday for people who just love kind of odd things like like me. It was mm. like, it was all overwhelming, like in a good way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Um, if anyone listening has actually tried the emulator, please let us know. We'd love to know how that fares, how it works. Um, yeah. Let's move on to the games that we're playing at the moment. And I'll start. Uh, so I'm playing Euphoria 2, the saga, uh, which uh, I, I've been meaning to mention for a few weeks, but I've been caught up <laughs> with other things. So finally, I'm getting into this one. It is out now. It just came out on the 1st of March. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm, I'm reviewing this one. And we mentioned it, oh, gosh, when was it, Kirk? A month or so, or well, even more ago, when yeah, the trailer yeah, dropped. Yeah. 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 And it's just uh, the sequel to this, gosh, what, uh, you know, what year was the original? Maybe Trev knows. It was the late 80s, uh, I think, in the NES or something. I think it was <laughs> early 90s. Game. Early 90s, okay. 92, something like that. Yeah. And Justin, you went on the show that time, so please let me know if you have actually heard of this, because I don't think, Kirk and I had not, <laughs> and Trev had, but not played it. Had you ever heard of Euphoria, Justin? Or tried it? Oh, no, it didn't release in the US, did it, I think, was the issue that we had. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think actually it was on a maybe like one of those Evercade carts, so it might have since. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At least yeah. But for the NES, I think it was just like Europe, Japan, like huh. yeah. North America. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So it's a platformer, and this is a, a direct sequel to a you know 30-something-year-old game or whatever it is. Um, and it's, you know, it's super cute. Like the characters are these, like there's a penguin, there's a cat, uh, there's a ghost. <laughs> and the last guy, I'm not even sure what he is. Maybe a duck. He's like this green creature, but maybe a build creature. I don't really know. And you, you know, you, you kind of meet all these guys, these, these friends along the way. There's an alien who's come and just chucked gunk everywhere. Like this goop, this kind of jelly like substance all over the place. So you're the penguin, you're the main guy and you have to go and clean up you know, the world from this goop. Um, and along the way, you meet your friends who come and help you. And they'll have different abilities. The cat can swim, which seems strange. But anyway, the cat can swim. The ghost can kind of jump, like almost like a Luigi jump, like a flutter jump. He can kind of do a, a longer jump, which is cool. Uh, the green guy Wait, can dig. can't just fly? No, that would be handy. But no, <laughs> he just flutter jumps. He can just jump greater distances. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you high five each other as you change characters. You just hit the L or R button, the, the triggers at the top there and you high five and switch players. So it's really fast and easy to switch between them. Uh, that's one of the gimmicks going for it. You've got this like little, I don't, it's very Japanese. Like it's really quirky, like in its, uh, gosh, it's approach, I suppose with the text, the story, uh, the music, <laughs> it's just all very odd, but in a cute way, it's, it's certainly fun. I'm not finding it super challenging so far, but we'll see if that ramps up at all. But there's a lot to do. You go through these levels. It seems like you have to do them a few times because there's extra things to collect along the way and you you unlock special uh, – you can you can purchase things from this vending machine which give you extra powers that then can open new pathways. So it's interesting and I'm enjoying it. I certainly love my platformers and it's the platforming is, is quite uh, solid. But, yeah, we'll see how the challenge ramps up as I continue with that one. But I'll get my review happening this week. The other one that I just quickly want to mention, I have mentioned it before, but the review is up now, is Promenade. Um, and I, I just thought it was worth mentioning because when I first talked about this a couple of weeks ago, I had only just started it. And now that I've had more time with it um, and written up the review, it's such a fun game. It's really, really fun and way more challenging than I expected initially, just because of the childlike approach that it takes in terms of the visuals. And also there's no text, you know, the instructions don't really have text-based um you know, <laughs> there's nothing saying do this or do that. It's more like imagery, right? So it's very, it's like you're playing the role of this kid who's trapped in this world and it, it really helps you emulate that or feel that, you know, what he would feel in, in this world, trying to work out these puzzles. And the puzzles uh, kind of ramp up in complexity. Um, they're really fun to, to sort of solve. And it's the platforming, again, is quite, um, it's really good. It's quite detailed and significant there's lots heaps of different moves you can learn along the way which keeps things very interesting so i just wanted to mention that again because it is uh, now that the review is out it is um yeah certainly a, a game worth checking out if you're into platformers it's a puzzle platformer so there's heaps of puzzles to solve as well as these cool challenges to kind of overcome 
I so, give yeah. you credit for getting it up, Gemma, because I was looking at a, I was reading it and I'm, I saw the screenshot you had where, you know, it checks off when you get all the cogs or it shows the ones you're yeah. missing. And I'm like, man, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's amazing. Gemma could, you know, get far enough to, to do the review because I know how completionist you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's fun. And I love, I love, yeah, that sort of style where you collect something and, you know, it ticks it off and you, you can move. This one, it has an elevator that's broken and you collect the cogs and, you know, you need a certain amount of cogs for each kind of section of the elevator to fix it. And then you can move up in the world and go to a new section uh, area as well. So yeah, it definitely opens up new pathways and keeps things feeling really fresh and interesting. And there's boss fights and all sorts. It's, um, yeah, it's just a different, it's a really different style that I really enjoy. Um, but yeah, let's move on to Trev. What are you playing at the moment? Uh, yeah, so this game actually came out a couple of weeks um, back from from Limited Run. I didn't actually think we got a code, but I was I was glad to find out we did. And uh, it's our Zet, the Jewel of uh, Faramore, if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, it's very much deliberately in this style of the old uh, compact disc interactive Zelda games, cool. which are kind of notorious. Uh, mostly from YouTubers who, who made fun of the cutscenes. <laughs> but uh, long before that was a popular thing, you know, I mentioned earlier about how I loved the mid 90s because there were so many strange systems. The CDI was one of them. And it's like, wow, yeah, they get this, these Zelda games, they get this Mario game. And <laughs> um, <laughs> this one is styled more after a, a Link the Faces of Evil, which is kind of a, more in the style. I guess the closest would be to like the second Zelda, um, Zelda 2 on the NES. You know, mm -hmm. it's not a top down, it's side scrolling type. And uh, for better or worse, it's exceedingly faithful uh, presentation wise <laughs> with the hand painted backgrounds and the, uh, and the, you know, the, the animation and, and the drawing and uh, the voice, even some of the, the same <laughs> voice actors apparently from the original games. And nice. so it makes a, a wonderful first impression, you know, as someone who, who has those games, who's played them. And obviously this one's, you know, better in a lot of ways. It doesn't have a stiff or clunky control. Um, there's a little bit of aimlessness to it. Um, and it might just be because I'm in a bad headspace this week, um, you, you know, dealing with COVID and whatnot, but... I find mm -hmm. myself wandering around more than I expected. It's like, what am I missing? Where do I go? Mm -hmm. So I got to, I got to delve into it more, but, um, you know, early impressions, they succeeded in what their aim was, which was to, to emulate that style and, you know, not, not just imitate that style, but emulate, improve it, you know, make it fun. And, uh, so I think it's gonna, it's gonna find an audience, you know, it probably already has, like I said, it's been out a couple of weeks, thankfully, um, I didn't read any reviews, so I don't have to, you know, I can approach it fresh, but. Mm, that's cool. Yeah, it certainly looks interesting, the art style. The cartoony kind of look of the characters against the backdrops there. I don't know. It'd be inter yeah, it's, interesting to see how it plays. Funny. Yeah. Like little things yeah. too, even like the logo for the company, it still has that very like CDIS kind of jingle when it boots up. And it's like little mm. things that people might not appreciate. But, but someone who had the hardware, I'm like, wow. Like, I think uh, uh, LRG even has, like, that CDI-style controller that they're selling along with the physical edition, which <laughs> um, wow. I don't know why people would want that because that controller was terrible, but <laughs> it's a fun collector's piece. Mm, is that in your basement as well, Kirk? you have one of those? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way down. I'll uh, As soon as this is done, we'll go check. <laughs> the, the funny thing about this game to me is that when one of our other reviewers, uh, one of the younger reviewers, I think he's a freshman in high school, was looking through Asana at some of the games, he contacted me about this and said, is this game supposed to look like those CDI Zelda games? <laughs> I thought, how does he even know? Like, how does, how does a freshman in high school even know about the CDI and be so familiar with, uh, <laughs> with the way things looked on it that he'd make that connection? Yeah, that's apparently wow. left an impression, good or bad. Yeah, YouTube. I tell you, that was like that was the thing for the while. Like 
people would just make fun of those cutscenes or redub those cutscenes, and <laughs> like mm. I, I remember there was a stretch of time where I just I could not see that. It's like, all right, guys, yeah, they're funny, you know, they've been funny for years. I'm like, it's cool you're just discovering them, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, yeah. Uh, well, Kirk, let's move on to you as well. So what are you playing at the moment? Um, well, I'm going to go back to last week when we were talking about the demo for Unicorn Overlord. And I'm cool. bringing this up because I'm now playing it for the second time. Um, we talked about, <laughs> Trevor gave me the suggestion of, could I just keep playing <laughs> back and forth till I'm so optimized I can complete the game within the five-hour demo? Um, yes. The answer to that is no, because the the demo actually ends in a couple ways. Uh, It cuts off at a certain point. And when they say five hours, it's five hours of actual battle time. Like the time you spend Ah. in the menus doesn't count towards that, which I I kind of knew because I was looking at the amount of, like when you save it, it says how long you've been playing it. And it was up to eight hours. um, And I hadn't quite hit the five. So when I did the demo the first time, I made it to the cutoff point in the story where you can't get any further but in the last battle or two, I used a lot of items um, that I had been found in order to make sure I could get through it. And there was one point where I had a healer and she kept healing the person in the front row, even though she was in desperate need of healing herself. And I was yelling <laughs> at her, say, why are you, you know, figure this out <laughs> because <laughs> you're not doing what you're supposed to do. And of course, I'm the one who had to figure it out. <laughs> um, you can assign when they use their active and when they use their passive abilities, um, who uses it, what triggers it, where it goes. There's a lot of customization. So I thought, all right, I'm going to go back and do this again and make sure that when I get to the point where it cuts off, I still have all my health items and all those other things that I had to waste to get through it. So I, I'm mm. doing that and I'm almost done with my second run through the demo um, and doing much better this time, much smarter. That's cool. And I think if the demo is going to be kind of you know, eight hours of actual playtime, like the five hours of battles, but eight hours or whatever, that you're actually sitting down with the game. Like how long is the real, the full version going to be? And that's a pretty decent demo. Right? Yeah. And there's, there are like five total areas to explore in this game. And I've, the demo cuts off. You barely cut through the first one. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah, this, mm-hmm. this could be a pretty big game depending on how many of the, side missions you go on and how you decide to uh, progress through the, um, if you're going to not grind cause you don't really grind in this game, but make sure you've got the right people and your party optimizations before you go into battles. So there, there's a lot, you could, you can tinker forever and drag on the game quite a bit, um, in all of its glorious, glorious, uh, factions, <laughs> facets, yeah. excuse me, facets. Nice. Well, that's cool. Did you have to use a different account to play to get, or could you do it on nope. the same? No, nope. you can okay. do it in the same. Just have to uh, dump your first save and, and uh, start okay. over from scratch. Kirk, Kirk, don't have a different account. You can. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was alluding to, but that's okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah, it happened. You, st- <laughs> you still haven't convinced me, Trev. <laughs> <laughs> if I haven't done it by now, uh, yep. m- maybe for Switch too. <laughs> Yeah, right. yeah. Something will happen. Some some big thing will be out there that I've absolutely got to have, and I'll break down and finally uh, <laughs> create, a, create a different account outside yeah. the US. <laughs> That's cool. Justin, just quickly, did you get to try this demo? Because we talked about it last week, but you were not on the show. Did you get to try uh, it or not really? I, I haven't. Um, it looks it looks intriguing. Um, I, I tried the pepper grinder uh, demo, mm. uh, mm-hmm. uh, and that nice. was that was really fun, but. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Trev? Oh, no, I was just saying nice to the Pepper Grinder demo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we both tried that. That was good. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, well, let's move on to the other game that you're playing, Kirk, which is Quadroids. Is that right? Quadroids. Quadroids. Uh, yeah, this is a game that came out recently. Its build is kind of like a, a Lemming-style gameplay, and I'm so far removed from that game that I don't know if I've ever played it or I've just played Lemming-style games. Um, right. But this one's this game, I think, exists specifically to make your brain explode. Um, <laughs> it's divided into four screens, and you it, like it starts out with just one person. Like you have to make make this character jump in various ways to get to the end of the level. 
And it starts out fine because there's just one and it's moving from screen to screen. I should say each of the four areas of the screen has a different button. So if the character is on that in, in the L screen, you use the L button to jump. If the character is in the ZR screen, then you use ZR to jump. And you kind of have to navigate him through the screens to get to the end. And that's fine until they, they bring in a second. So there are two <laughs> things moving at once. And you're looking at both screens and trying to figure out when to make the right one jump and hit the right button at the wow. right time. And... Yeah, <laughs> even like, I, I get tripped up just thinking about it because, yeah. you know, I my, I don't know if it's that, you know, my brain is too old um, or it's, it's it's a lot of fun, uh, but it's there's a lot of trial and error because but when they move, they move it like uh, like, let's say you don't do it right. And and one of them dies or it's taking too long and you want to start over. It's the exact same puzzle each time. You just got to know when to get that one to jump. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have to wait for it to get to the next screen to see how it's going to behave. Like there was one, I kept trying something. I couldn't make the jump, but then I realized if I had him go to a different level first, then it came in from a different direction when it bounced onto the, the, the different quadrant and would go into the right place. Um, my son was watching me do this and I was like, are you taking it over? And he said, yeah. So he tried it and the first couple <laughs> were very easy for him. But then after a while, he's like, ah, I hit the wrong button. I hit the wrong button. And that's, that's really what it is because you're, you're looking at one and you just hit ZL for it, but then you look at the other one and you instinctively want to hit ZL again when you can't because it's on a different screen. Yeah. Um, but it, and what you could do, it's actually listed as a, a one to four player single um, single system game because you could just hand off a controller to somebody else and say, okay, you're in charge of ZL, you're in charge of L, you're in charge of R and you're in charge of RL. Four people can play at once and then you're That's just cool. timing it and working together. But, but the real challenge is trying to make all these things happen on the screen um, with, with, with one person. It's a very interesting concept. Do the, does the person move from quadrant to quadrant? Is that what happens? Yes. It's yeah, okay. the, the person moves by himself. Um, mm-hmm. So you're not propelling him. The moment it starts, he starts going. And then all you're doing is jumping. That, that literally is it. One button for each quadrant. <laughs> right. Um, and it's a simple. little like sometimes... Uh, they'll fall into certain areas and just bounce back and forth. So it's not always instant death. If you don't make the jump, um, they're, they're just moving around and you can concentrate on one while the other one's caught in a little thing, bouncing back and forth. So it's kind of easy to get through it. Um, but it, it gauges you on three things. First there's completion and then there's time to completion and number of jumps. So mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of easy to get through it where you just beat the level and then you go on. But if you want to, you know, get the trophies for all three, now you've really got to work on it. Um, so there's a lot of replay mm. value as you push ahead. Wow. Yeah, that sounds intense. I, I like the sound of it. Like, it sounds interesting. <laughs> but yeah, tricky. Much easier with multiple players, obviously. <laughs> yeah. 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 And so like, even if you have multiple people, you're still like, you're not watching one person and making him run. You're looking at your part of the screen. And when somebody gets there, then you know you kind of have to take control and get that uh, get that character off to the other the the next screen. Yeah. Okay. That sounds super interesting. What what is this little person? What is he meant to be? A human? A robot? Or an animal? What is he? Kind of like a robot, sort of. Mm-hmm. It's it's. I, I think it's described at the beginning. Um, like I said, it it kind of tripped up my brain too much, so I I probably <laughs> forgot the entire introduction. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's kind of like a like a worker robot that's looking to uh, complete its task. Yeah, and there's more than a hundred levels to get through, so yeah. that's going to keep you busy. <laughs> yes, it, it it is. We we didn't get too far along on on my first run, so I want to get the review live this week. So I'm going to have to dig deep into it. But whether I'm able to complete all 100 before I get the review up, I I can say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd we'll be see if I get impressed. enough people to help me and take the other controllers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got acid baths, lasers, deadly spikes, and other vicious traps. So there's plenty yeah. to avoid. So no yeah. wonder. You and keep a lot things. of those I haven't even gotten to yet. <laughs> right now I'm <laughs> like it. It took me long enough just to get past jumping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. Cool. Quadroids. Like okay. how they say deadly spikes as opposed to the spikes deadly. that. Yeah. Are okay. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. 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 The 
happy spikes that we like. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen any spike that helped anyone out in a video game. Yeah, that's a challenge for next week. See if you can find, okay. find something. Well, there you go. I want some developer out there to release a game with helpful spikes. Helpful spikes, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. I seem to recall this old basketball game. If you're playing as the New York Knicks, Spike Lee was in the crowd and he could cheer you <laughs> on. And... Right. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Spike. Yeah. <laughs> or the one from Buffy. There was that uh, vampire in Buffy. He was oh, a bad yeah. guy. And he became a helpful Spike eventually. True. Yeah, yeah I like Spike. Yeah. yeah. That's true. <laughs> Very and cool. There was Thank Spike you. in Land Before Time. He was, he was. Oh yeah, the dinosaur. Oh man, yeah. look at what coming up with all these spikes. See? The, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the backstage keyboard player for Queen in tour, Spike Edney. He was helpful. There you go. <laughs> so many spikes. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> we should play. What's that game? Uh, isn't there a game where you have to name certain things in a category within a time limit? You know, if we had to name helpful spikes, well, we just nailed that one. Oh, yeah, we did. (laughs) (laughs) Won a car. Yeah, it's like, uh, you remember $100,000 Pyramid? uh, Oh, sure. Game show. Um, So, yeah, we we list all those things, Kirk, and and then the person's like, uh, helpful spikes. You know, what are helpful spikes? <laughs> Some people would be like, what? But we'd be like, uh, Spike Lee in NBA Jam. <laughs> Whatever it was. Helpful, obscure spikes. Well, Spike yeah. Lee's not, not, not obscure. Maybe some of the others were, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Very cool. So, yes, Quadroids, we'll look out for that review. Thank you, Kirk. Uh, and we'll just to finish off, we just wanted to – we haven't done our Switch to Miss of the Week. I don't think we did it last week because we had the showcase to talk about and it filled up a lot of time. Um, we haven't really got any new rumors, but we did want to talk about the delay just quickly. Uh, and this is in inverted quotes, like delay, right? Um, because we've all heard <laughs> – We've all heard that the Switch uh, is rumoured to come, Switch 2, I should say. Switch 2 is rumoured to come out in 2025, which we kind of addressed a few weeks ago. But it's interesting, and I think Kirk mentioned this um, before the show, that it's called they're calling it a delay. Um, did you want to expand on your feelings as to why that a misnomer or a mis- yeah, uh, misconception? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to call it a delay if Nintendo did not officially <laughs> announce a release date to begin with. Yeah. It's a delay to what we when we hoped it was going to come out, and it may be a delay to when Nintendo intended to put it out. Um, but I, to, yeah, to me, it's not a delay because until they announce it, I, I've got no expectations of when it's actually actually going to drop. And even if it is a delay, Trevor knew that this was yeah. coming. Yes. <laughs> he said we're not getting it in 2025, so it's certainly not a delay to you. That's you know, right. Yeah. It's another point. It makes your... me wonder: Did Justin start the uh, delay rumor? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't put exactly. it past him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like what you said also before the show, Justin, about Metroid Four being delayed. Whether that mm-hmm. is included, we never got a date really for that. Violet, did we? So, yeah. Yeah. It still it still so hurts my heart. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, after every um. Nintendo like investor meeting, they post like a PDF of like their upcoming releases, you know, and it's mm-hmm. still on there all the, all these there. years. And it, and it says Metro <laughs> Prime 4 uh, Temp or TBA or, you know, you know <laughs> TBA. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you know what I was thinking? Like, because we just have the logo, right? And nothing else. You know how like when you, you lose the internet, you know, you can play that little game like with a little pixel like dinosaur or whatever that <laughs> while you're waiting yeah. to connect, like they should do something with that, with the Metroid logo where we can like click on it and just have like Samus roll around as a ball or something. Yeah. <laughs> just so we can have some type of interaction with it. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's another prediction there, Trev. Like you, you've now brought, um, they're going to do a new Metroid, uh, Metroid prime pinball too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I would love like, that. You yeah. guys love uh, Metroid Prime Four. You're gonna love this this new pinball game. You know, <laughs> wouldn't that be I great? Would, like, like it. <laughs> it, it, in like yes. a Nintendo Direct, they like you see like the Metroid logo and it's coming up, and people are like, oh, "Finally, Metroid Prime 4. and it's like Metroid Prime Pinball Two. You know? <laughs> it's like, 
And, and then like a subtitled Federation Force, and you're like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. I, I would love to see Nintendo when they finally release that, like start off the beginning of the direct with what yeah. looks like it's gonna be Metroid 4, and then it yeah. is Metroid Pinball 2. <laughs> And then at the end, then they really announced Metroid 4 just yeah. to play with people's yeah. minds and have everyone yelling and screaming and yeah. throwing oh, their headphones into yeah. the monitor. That That's good. what they're saving it for. They're going to wait until they have a new pinball, a new blast ball, a new other M, and they'll release them all at, like the year of Metroid, like the year of Luigi. Yeah. yeah. And they'll announce yeah. all three, and then at the end, it will be Prime 4. <laughs> Break the internet. I, I'm just glad we got Metroid Dread a few years ago. Metroid Dread was amazing. Mm. A, couple years. a primary yeah. mastered. That's true. And primary yeah, mastered like, last year. <gasps> yeah. Oh. See, there's plenty of love for Metroid, really. Just well, not Metroid 4. A smidge of the love. Yeah. A smidge, a smidge of the love. love. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a sprinkle. <laughs> sprinkle. <laughs> well, is 2025 is a, a significant year in terms of Metroid anniversaries? It's not like, you know, the 30th uh, or 40th or anything, is it? Um, we're not at that level. No. Because that would be good for the year of Metroid, right? Um, it would be the 15 year of Metroid Other M. Uh, no. <laughs> I, I, I actually, uh, so Metroid Prime Pinball came out in 2005. So it oh, would be the it would 20 be the 20 year for Metroid Prime Pinball. <laughs> hey, that was a lot of fun. Oh my God. Prime Pinball. That also came with the uh, the little Rumble Pack for the for the DS. You guys remember that? You'd put it in the GBA slot and yeah, it was they don't nice. do enough of those little add-ons anymore. Where, where's the switches little? Well, the switch rumbles, I guess. But where's the switches little gimmick? I don't know. Not from the switch itself, I mean, you know, a hybrid with Joy Con. Well, they but... they had the they had like the HD rumble and the the little IR thing that they used like barely in some of the launch titles. But mm. um, so I can't believe they never game. did another game with that. What was that ring? Ring Fit Adventure ring? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like, how did they never do anything else with that? Yeah, that was cool. You got ideas for rings? If that was in your $1,000 pyramid, whatever that show was that you guys used to watch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obscure video game peripherals. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Very good. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Was there anything else anyone wanted to add before we close things off for the week? Any further updates? Nope. Okay, going once, going twice. Well, thank you so much for joining me this week. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. We are certainly love talking about all things Nintendo with you. We hope you enjoy the show. Please let us know if you have any comments. Uh, DM us. We're you know on YouTube, we're on Twitter or X, if if you so want to call it that. We're on Mastodon and Blue Sky as well. So follow us on your channel of choice. Um, we are. I, I know I said this last week, but literally have finished the design of the magazine this week. So it's now in proofing. Uh, it's, it's on its way. It's coming soon. So please jump onto patreon.com slash Nintendo if you'd like to grab yourself a copy of our li- latest issue. And until next week, thank you and game on, everybody. Bye. See you. <laughs>